Okay, so now that we've finished our uh, initial mat, what we want to do is export this so that we can then project this onto uh, our scene in Maya. So to export it, what we want to do is just make sure that we're not, we don't actually have this uh, this, this uh, guide wire uh, wire mesh um, visible. So turn that off, okay, or just just make it invisible. Uh, and then all you need to do is save it as a TIFF. So just go File, Save as TIFF. Um, the only thing I would say on this is when you save as TIFF, you want to make sure you turn alpha le alpha channels off. So make sure that that's turned off, and then go Save. Um, and then what what I've done is I've created a Maya project, so I'm going to save it our source images and save it into our Maya project okay I've already saved this and I've called it initial mat so I'm now going to bring that into my my scene okay uh, right so I've saved this into the source images folder in my Maya project okay now what I want to do is project this onto our scene so what I'm going to do is just go into my perspective view just to make things a little bit easier and what I want to do is create another render layer here so I've got my mask layer there's my wireframe let's create another render layer so I'm going to select everything create a render layer you have to select things before you create a render layer otherwise uh, those objects won't be included in the render layer okay I'll call this projection or projected okay then what I want to do is uh, again I'm going to select everything here and I'm going to go assign new material okay and I'm going to create a Lambert shader here okay um, uh, and that's created a new material. To access that material, I want to right click and just go material attributes. And this is the Lambert shader I've created, okay? Um, I'm going to rename this. Um, I'll rename it, uh, I'll call it building mat, okay? Just to say that it's, it's, it is the, the material for the main sort of buildings here, okay? Now, what we're going to do is. Um, I want to put some. I want the projection to project onto the. I want it to uh, affect the color attribute here. So I'm going to click on this uh, icon here to put some color onto our materials. Uh, and then what I want to do is normally, when, if we were doing a UV texture, we would just select a file, click file, and then obviously select the file that we want. Now what I want to do here is right click on the file, okay, and you'll see that. Create as texture, that's the normal option that we'd have, but there's another option here called create as projection, and I want to select that one. So it's going to apply color to our model in the normal way, but it's going to project it onto the model instead. Okay? Um, uh, now, uh, okay. uh, now what we've got is, is we can see here we've got our projection. Okay, and I want to change that to perspective. So we're rendering, that's being, so the, the material will be projected from the perspective of a uh, of a particular camera so we select perspective and then by selecting perspective what you'll see is when we go into this option here the camera projection attributes uh, it's going to allow us to select a camera to project from okay so here's our projection camera okay which this is uh, the camera that we're projecting from I've called it projections so these are all different cameras uh, and then uh, what I want to do is, uh, uh, and now what I want to do is select the image that we're going to project onto it. So here we have image, and remember we we exported it as um, uh, we exported it as initial mat, didn't we? Okay, uh, so I'm going to go into here, click on that icon to select an image, and it was initial mat that we'd actually exported here. Let's go do that. There's there's our mat here. There, let's go open. Give it a moment, okay. And now you can see it's projecting it onto our model, okay. Um, and then what we can do is it looks like you know it, it, it's completely wrong and and isn't working. But actually, if we look at it from the camera perspective, so the perspective of our camera, camera one, you can see that it is almost fitting. Now there's a slight issue here. Uh, what I need to do is I need to go back into my projection. So. Uh, to access all the um, to access the actual settings for this projection, what you want to do is go into Hypershade. So if I go into uh, let's have a look, uh, Windows Rendering Hypershade. So I'm just going to access um, uh, this this material. So it's the building material that we created. If I click on that and Graph Input Output, you can see here's all the bits that make that up. So this is the projection system. 
that's the camera that's going into the projection system and this is the file that's going into it and then also that's being projected onto the color attribute of this material so you can see you can access all the elements of, of, of the projection here you can change the file change the camera etc okay but really the main thing you're looking at is this node here projection here and what we want to do if I just move this down you can see the building if I if I just uh, turn on the wireframe for a moment, you see the building and the stuff isn't quite lining up. And the reason for that is what we're doing at the moment is we're matching the film gate okay, of the camera. And remember, what we're actually working to is the wireframe that we actually, uh, the wireframe that we actually um, uh, rendered out from this using the render settings so actually it's the camera resolution it's the resolution of the render settings that we want to match to if I click on that you can see that everything is now matching up okay we've now got another problem here in that uh, there's so, sort of lighting on the scene here so you know some of these this is very dark and then some of this is very bright okay and what we actually want to do is just have all this evenly evenly lit okay and yeah you know, we can we can add our own lighting and stuff later on if we want to but for the moment we want it evenly lit so in order to do that I need to actually go to the building material itself so that's the actual Lambert shader that we're using here okay and I need to go into uh, what I want to do is turn down the diffuse setting so the diffuse light is the is the light that's kind of si the diffuse uh, um, uh, attribute is simulating the light that's hitting this object um, from lights from the from the default light that's in this scene. Okay, so it's kind of simulating, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, you know, light coming from a particular direction. Okay, and obviously, if I if I add lights to this scene, it's this diffuse setting I'm going to want to use to actually simulate how that light's going to look. At the moment, I don't want that. What I want to do is turn up my ambient light. Here we go. Okay, and what my ambient light does is it ignores all the lights that are in the scene and just basically lights it all nice and evenly anyway. Okay, great. Uh, now I'm just gonna, uh, 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 I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is just minimize this because we might need to come back to it later. So we look at through camera one. This is our animated camera, and you can see actually we're getting quite a nice result from this. Uh, and, and you can definitely see now that we're, we're you know we're going to be able to achieve something with this. We, we we should be able to make this sort of work. Okay. Now, uh, one of the things I would say is is this as I zoom in, one of the things that's kind of giving things away is this um, pipe here, because this pipe's sticking out of the building and basically this surface is flat. Even though we're projecting the texture, because we're projecting the, the, this this onto a flat surface, as we zoom in. It's really giving it away a little bit. I mean, if, 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 if it was a very subtle pan move, we might get away with that. But as it's pushing in, it's kind of giving the issue away a little bit or giving giving away the move. OK, so um, uh, what, we, what we could do is we could um, edit this geometry and actually kind of have this geometry kind of sticking out just here where the pipe is uh, and I tried that and what that did is it created a, a, a doubling issue and I'm going to talk about doubling in a minute okay but basically what, what happened was you'd see the pipe here and then you'd see the pipe coming onto the window as well it, it, it then uh, you know another bit of the pipe would then start projecting onto this window here as well so you had a bit of a doubling issue um, so it wasn't a perfect solution in fact it sort of projected behind it as well so what I did was um, to solve this problem, a simple solution was to um, uh, go back into my mat. Okay, and you can see I've actually already uh, highlighted it here, but I will just turn it off. Hang on, let me just find it. Uh, here we go. So what I did is I created a patch here. So I just basically copied this bit here and created a patch to kind of cover that there. Okay. All right, and I've exported that as projection version five. Okay, so I'm just going to go back into Maya, and then what I'm going to do is in my hypershade now. So bring that back up. Uh, there we go, and I'm going to go to File, and then just obviously just change this file to projection. Sorry, projection version four. So that's with that's with this little patch that we've added on here. That's the only change to that. Okay, let's open that up, and you can see that that's nicely solved that particular problem. Okay, great. Now, 
doubling we've got this issue of doubling uh, somewhere else as well and this this gives me an opportunity to really kind of show you what the problem is so if we look at this bridge as we push in as the camera pushes in here you can see that it sort of reveals another copy of this building okay so what's actually happening here is if I go to the perspective view I don't know whether this will work out but if we go to the perspective view what's happening is the image is being projected onto this building and as we push in okay what we can actually see is the image is also being projected through this building onto this bridge okay um, now where we start which is from the same position as the actual projection it's not a problem but as we push in it kind of starts to reveal where we've actually projected this building the, the image of this building onto this bridge as well okay so let's just go back to the camera perspective and that's called doubling and that's quite a common problem that occurs with um, uh, using this type of technique now there's two two solutions we can go for okay one solution is we create a separate image to project onto this bridge so basically what we'll do is create a separate material for this bridge and it'll use exactly the same kind of projection setup but it'll just be projecting a different image okay so it'll be a Lambert it'll be it'll project from the same camera but it will just use um, sorry but it will just be projecting a different image okay um, and what we could do there is simply in Photoshop if I turn off all these other elements in Photoshop so we just keep the bridge here what I could then do is paint use patches to paint this bridge and make it larger okay and in fact you will actually spot that I've, I've kind of already done that because in the original photo the image the bridge sort of stopped about here okay and I've already actually done that painted extra parts of the bridge in this uh, to kind of cover that extra area and then obviously I, I would then literally just project just this image onto the bridge okay uh, let's get rid of this path as well though that wouldn't cause us a problem because that's not part of the image well, that's not going to be projected on the bridge so this would be the bit that would be projected onto the bridge okay and um, so that's one way of doing it, it's projecting separate images another approach is actually set up you don't have to project the entire map from the same projection uh, projection camera we can set up different projection cameras as well so it might be that I put a projection camera you know facing from a different angle and project on this to get a better result okay so there's a number of there's there's two options you can reach for a projecting the images separately b uh, uh, actually having uh, uh, using separate uh, um, um, uh, camera projectors. Obviously, if you use a separate camera projector, you're going to have to go through that whole process of generating the wireframe and building a, a brand new mat uh, for for that particular uh, to be projected from that particular perspective. In this case, I'm just going to go for doing a separate image. Okay, and so what you'll see in here is in my sort of different mats that I've created. Here's the one that I've created just for this bridge, and you see it all fills in. Just all it is, just a little bit of extra area here. Okay, that's all I need. Just that little bit of extra area there to put onto the bridge. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to um, uh, I'm going to go into my hyper shade. Here we go. And this building material here that we've got, I'm actually going to duplicate this. So I'm going to go Control C, Control. I'm just going to press Continue because I've got the student version. Control V. Okay. So this is the. Let's just check here. Yeah, this is the pasted version of the building material. I'm just going to call that. So this is going to be our bridge material. So I'm going to call it bridge material. Bridge material. Great. Okay. Oh, let's do that correctly. Yeah, bridge material. Okay. So that's called bridge material, and then what we're going to do is, um, uh, yeah, uh, and then what I want to do is, at the moment, and, and th this is just an area of confusion here, at the moment you might think, well, I've got the bridge material selected, so obviously I'm looking at all the bridge, you know, all the nodes that make up that bridge material. Well, actually, that's not the case. You're still looking at the nodes that make up this building material. You can see, indeed, here it is, building material, okay? So to see the nodes that make up that bridge material, you need to click on it and then click on graph input outputs and you'll see that here we are. And it's basically copied all the elements that make that up. Okay. And obviously what we can do here now, now that we're highlighting the, the network that makes this bridge material, we can actually go into here or onto the file node here and then just change that to the mater uh, material that we created specifically for the bridge. So here we are, projection bridge. Here we are, open okay 
and you'll see that we still had no effect and that's because at the moment the bridge material isn't actually using the um, uh, isn't actually using the uh, uh, sorry isn't, isn't doesn't actually have that the bridge doesn't actually have that bridge material applied so I'm going to click on the bridge material I'm going to right click and I'm going to go um, uh, sorry assign existing material bridge material okay and you can see just give it a moment there we are and you can see now it's a, and now it's what it's done is projected that new material it's a very subtle change okay uh, but you'll see now now that it's projected that material we don't have that doubling issue that's that's removed that doubling issue okay so effectively in Photoshop all I'm doing is kind of making sure if I bring the brit the, the building on here is you can see I'm just creating that overlap there's just that little bit of overlap there and then exporting in the image separately uh, and projecting it separately has allowed us to kind of resolve that problem and that is quite a powerful technique for, for sort of resolving the doubling issue now when we're in um, um, uh, and that's quite a powerful technique for resolving the doubling issue so that's projecting your materials onto um, uh, onto uh, a geometry in in Maya.